Hello again, UCF. We're going to get through this video really quickly so I can go home. It's the end of the day, Friday. Um, let's go into, oops, I forgot to share. Here we go. There we go. So let's go back to, aha, right here. So we had just seen what the standard cell potentials are or those standard electrode potentials. What does that mean and how do we get to them? Now, how do we calculate that E of that cell? We need to figure out where the oxidation's occurring, where the reduction's occurring. What's the cathode? What's the anode? Go find those two reduction potentials from that table. And the easiest way to do it is just cathode minus anode. Don't change the signs. Do not multiply or alter the stoichiometry. Like it says that E or potential value is intensive. So it's only dependent on what it is, what's being oxidized and what's being reduced, not how much of it. Um, so some, you'll see other equations that'll ask you to look at what's being oxidized, what's being reduced. Easiest way though, where you don't need to worry about flipping signs or doing anything like that, is just cathode minus anode. Take the value from the table, find out what the cathode is, take the value from the table for the anode, subtract anode from cathode, that's it. And you'll find out that potential for your cell. Um, tendency, so things higher on the table, um, are more likely to be reduced and things lower on the table are more likely to be oxidized. So if I combine two things and one's higher on the table, what I should see is that will be spontaneously reduced and this will be spontaneously oxidized. So I can figure out what's my cathode and what's my anode. If I flip it um, so that this is oxidized and this is reduced, I'm gonna get some positive value and I'm gonna have to put energy in to make that happen. So in terms of yeah, spontaneity, if you're looking at copper and zinc, they're both written on the table as reductions, but I can see zinc is lower on the table. So it's more likely to be oxidized. So in that case, if you look at this first example here, where the zinc is being oxidized and the copper is being reduced, that's spontaneous. And that would be the um, cathode minus the anode. We'd have a negative 1.1 value there. So that would, is how much voltage we should get out of that spontaneous reaction. If we flip it though, if we make the thing higher on the table, the copper being the thing that's oxidized and the thing lower on the table, the zinc being the thing that's reduced, that's gonna be non-spontaneous. And we'd have a 0.34 minus a negative 0.76, give us a positive 1.1. So we'd have to put 1.1 volts into that non-spontaneous reaction to drive it. Um, so a solution contains both sodium iodide and sodium bromide, which oxidizing agent could you add to selectively oxidize iodine and not bromine? So what's going to be reduced? And we have several options here, chlorine, hydrogen peroxide, copper chloride, and nitric acid. Well, what we're going to do is go back to that table. If you can see, here's our chlorine, uh, or no, we're bromine, sorry, we had sodium bromide and we had sodium iodide. So you can see the iodide is more likely to be oxidized than the bromide or the bromine here. So what I need to do is find something that's a better reducing agent than iodine, but not a better reducing agent than the bromine. So it has to be something on this table that's above iodine, but not above bromine. And what we can see here out of our possible choices, there's nitrate right there, NO3, above iodine, below bromine. So that's why that would be the better oxidizing agent, which is the thing that's being reduced, that facilitates oxidation. So that's why that's that nitric acid right there. It's one of the ways you can use that table. I'm thinking again, things higher on the table are more likely to be reduced. Things lower on the table are more likely to be oxidized. Predicting whether a metal will dissolve in acid. So certain things will, a lot of times metals will dissolve in acids, but some won't. Um, gold and platinum are really good examples of metals that oftentimes won't dissolve in acids. We have to make a very special type of acid called aqua regia a lot of times to dissolve those. Well, what really is going on here is just another type of redox reaction. And what we have to do is if we want a metal to dissolve, we need it to become an ion. So it needs to be oxidized, go from its, its normal metal state to its cation state, and then it becomes soluble and water will be aqueous at that point. So really with what we're doing with that acid is we're just looking at where is that on that reduction potential table? And is it above 
our, our uh, metal that's going to be dissolved, in which case that it will dissolve, or is it below, in which case the metal will not dissolve. So here's an example um, of why we can dissolve most things in nitric acid. Here's the reduction for nitric acid, and then we'd look at whatever that metal is. When we go to that table, is it above or below this nitric acid? And you can see it has a relatively high reduction potential. And you can see most things, silver, um, iron, coppers, a lot of these metals are below it. And there's only a few that are above the reduction of the um, nitric acid. We have, there's our gold right there. I don't see platinum on here. It might just not be, this doesn't include every single thing in the world, but this shows you why gold wouldn't dissolve in nitric acid. And that's really all we're doing to predict whether or not it will dissolve. What's higher or lower and then what on the table, what's gonna be reduced, what's gonna be oxidized. So which metal dissolves in nitric acid, but not hydrochloric acid? Well, hydrochloric acid is just gonna be H plus ions in the solution. So that's actually gonna be our standard reduction potential. So we need to see something that's above the standard reduction potential for hydrogen, because that means it won't dissolve in hydrochloric acid, but below the standard reduction potential for that NO3. So we have iron, gold, silver. Let's go back to our table again. All right, where's iron? We want, and we want solid iron. So we wanna go from uh, zero iron, or iron zero here, right there, there's our solid iron, to an ionic form like iron two plus, which would be aqueous. So that would be iron. Well, we can see that's below the H plus. So iron would be soluble in both nitric acid and HCl. So we want it to only be soluble in one of them. So iron isn't the contender. Let's go back to here. Here's our gold, same thing. We're starting with solid gold, oxidation state of zero, going to three plus, so now it's soluble, it's aqueous in that solution. Well, that's above both HCl, which is the H, uh, plus and the nitric acid. So it wouldn't dissolve in either. And then our other example was silver. We find silver right here. Well, silver's above H plus, so it won't dissolve in HCl, but it is below that NO3 minus that nitrate. So it will dissolve in nitrate. So that's why silver would be the answer for this question right here. Again, this isn't something where you'd even have to look at the values. You could just see where do they fall along the table. Or you wouldn't need to be given the table. You could just be given those values. You'd know that HCl, H plus is zero. So if you see that the reduction potential for iron is some like negative 0.4, okay, you know it's soluble in HCl. If you know the reduction potential for HNO3 is 0.96, you see gold, it's 1.4. Well, that's above that. And silver, it's 0.7, it's below that. So you could use it just using the values as well as the table. Um, so that's the main stuff there, that's how to use that table. Hopefully that's helpful. Same thing as always, work problems. The more you work problems, you're gonna go back, you're gonna start using that table, deciphering what is the question asking you and how do I need to utilize that table. Um, hopefully this was helpful, hopefully this made sense with um, oxidizing reduction, why metals dissolve and why they don't. Um, so I'll see you in the next chapter, kinetics.